Hi everyone, I'm Nia. Uh, I did my bachelor's degree in neuroscience at the University of Calgary. Uh, when I was in high school, I took a psychology course and in that course we reached the neuropsychology chapter and I really like that. Um, I was sitting in grade 11 or 12 uh, looking through all my textbooks and I essentially made the decision based on uh, what subject I wouldn't mind learning about for the next few years. Um, and I liked neuroscience because I knew that it didn't have all the answers already, so I would be able to somehow contribute to this unknown field. And I chose Calgary because um, the program there is quite unique. Uh, it was one of the few in Canada that had a direct entry, so I wouldn't have had to do a general first year and then apply in my second year. I didn't want that stress, so that's what I did. Um, the pros and cons of my program, it's good because it's small and you get good research exposure and you'll get guaranteed funding. The con is that you will not have your neuroscience classes really until third year. So you won't really know what your degree is about uh, until basically halfway through um, and lots of people find that frustrating. But it's good because the first two years you'll be covering basic science concepts, which will be helpful if you're writing the MCAT, for example. And the culture in my program is mostly uh, good. It's n like no big red flags in terms of competitiveness. Uh, you'll be able to receive help from your peers, but what we're known best for is for our good mentorship from uh, students that are older than you. So I'll have to tell you, there's going to be a lot of labs, which means that if you take five courses per semester, roughly three or four of them will have labs, at least for the first two years for sure, which means that you'll be spending twice the amount of time uh, than a regular student would at university just in your courses. And uh, we do have one experiential learning course uh, at the end of first year. It'll be a spring course and they'll take it to Kananaskis and they'll teach you how to do experiments on snails with a little bit of neuroscience in there too. Uh, it's pretty fast paced. It's kind of like a steady grind. They basically teach you everything from uh, philosophy and history to like excruciating biochemistry. So in general, we, um, our graduates go into medical school or graduate school, like a master's program. We do have, um, if you have a good background in research and you have a good portfolio, you may even go into a direct entry PhD program. Um, and, but lately, um, I've seen a lot of students combine their neuroscience degree with something like computer science and then uh, go do computer science related stuff and what I do recommend most of my students now is to combine neuroscience with any sort of unorthodox pairing and making themselves into a unique professional. Um, do I suggest or is it expected to do a co-op? So for science students, we don't necessarily do co-ops, we do uh, research in the summer. And I absolutely recommend that you do that, uh, especially in this program, they basically hand it to you. You have a whole research institute uh, for brain research. It's called the Hotchkiss Brain Institute that is there and they accept students for the summer. Uh, our program has guaranteed funding for students um, and you can also apply for other funding to make it look more official. But um, definitely if you're going for this undergrad, I would recommend that you consider research as a potential career. So use that at least one of your summers to do something like that. And as for the uh, how to arrange research, 
very briefly how you what you do is um, in your first or second year um, start emailing professors in the institute send a lot of emails do that in about October uh, meet and discuss a project with them in January apply for funding in February and then you'd start working in their lab in May and you would do that for three or four months depending on what you want to do my general approach to that I won't tell you any one class to take or not take and this is why um, I followed someone's advice to take quote-unquote an easy a course um, and it didn't work out for me because I wasn't interested in the course personally which means I didn't do well and every hour spent in that class seems like time of my life that I'll never get back again uh, so yeah, I would recommend to just follow exactly what your passions are and take it as an opportunity to craft your degree into something you want tailored to yourself. Okay, so um, a big piece of advice I give people, especially as they enter our third year, which is our notoriously difficult year, is that um, to protect their study time and to protect their free time uh, so for me for example i my brain does not work past nine o'clock i can't do homework after that and i also don't do homework on weekends just because i need that time to perform better on the week afterwards um, and then another fun principle that i like to tell all my students is the parkinson principle uh, essentially it means that work expands to fill the time of its completion so you can take one hour to write a lab report if you're in that much of a time crunch you could also take six hours to write a lab report so essentially that means that you know you can write it in an hour which means you should write it in an hour and it shouldn't expand to be six hours Um, and the first one is if you lived on residence, what are the pros and cons of living on residence? So I didn't, but uh, a lot of my friends who are in neuroscience um, lived on residence. That worked well for them uh, because uh, it was good. A lot of them were new to Calgary, so they got that extra bonding experience they made a lot of friends automatically and it's good for them uh for those of them which didn't like to wake up very early and that was a struggle and they just wanted to roll out of bed and pop into class for me personally i stayed at home my family was in calgary uh, i really liked having home cooked meals not having to worry about rent or any of the financial responsibilities. Um, I also wanted to reduce the cost of my undergrad because I knew I was going to go into something, uh, to go into further education and that was going to cost way more money too. Um, and I also liked being around uh, sane adults, not necessarily equally confused teenagers. Uh, what areas of campus are popular or go-to spots? Uh, in general, uh, we, me and my friends, we'd mostly sit in Mac Hall, which is our big uh, food court area. We have surprisingly a lot of options for food. Um, and if you're an extrovert that needs to have fun, we have Thursden, which is, uh, the den is a place in Mac Hall and you can go uh, on Thursday evenings and I don't know, extroverts have fun there. Um, but we also have different libraries, uh, each of them with a different uh, level of loudness that is the cultural norm in that library. And I'm sure a lot of other universities have this too. Uh, it's just something that I didn't know coming out of high school. What clubs do you suggest getting involved in? So this is actually important. Um, I made a mistake in my first two years. I got involved in clubs that I thought would be good uh, or they would look good on my resume or like clubs that I really should be involved in as a neuroscience student. Um, that didn't go well. I didn't enjoy my time there. I didn't enjoy the people. So my piece of advice would be to find the place where you like the people and that can be the Save the Whales Club and it's got nothing to do with your degree but the people are great and you'll make some friends and 
you will enjoy what you're doing and it'll distract you from your courses. If you did exchange or have an opinion on exchange, share it. Uh, so I actually planned to do a whole year away in Singapore. I didn't actually follow through with that uh, because I counted and it would have added an extra year onto my degree. Um, I would still recommend everyone to look into fitting some sort of an exchange into their degree. It could even be like a, taking one course in the summer, uh, but I just kind of did a, a cost-benefit analysis and it didn't really work for me. How do you suggest making friends? Okay, I'm an introvert, so my big advice mostly to introverts is to capitalize on the month of September. That is the month where people are unusually uh, friendly and you can introduce yourself to anyone and nobody would think anything of it. In general, that dies down like mid-October and it's weird to come up to someone and say like, hi, my name is... Uh, so please capitalize on September and make a lot of friends then. The seventh big question is what support resources are available to students? So we have uh, a wellness center we, with psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, massage people, physiotherapists, like right uh, in the middle of our campus. So you can access those. Uh, we also have different types of advisors, uh, counselors that can talk to you about anything about like life related things, academic related things. Uh, the ones that I found most helpful were the career advisors because it got to a point where I needed my resume fixed, like I didn't know what the difference was between a CV and a resume and uh, I had them look over it, edit it, I had them practice interviews with me. Um, so that would say, in, I would say in my experience, those were the most helpful. Uh, in terms of female support, diversity and minority groups, and out of province support, actually we have um, International Student Center, the Women's Center, and the Q Center. Uh, the, the Q Center is for LGBTQ plus uh, people, and, and those are really big centers. They have big events, they have their own offices, um, and like you would find a really nice community there. What do you wish you knew uh, or wish you took advantage of during your undergrad? Um, I wish I took more advantage of empty classrooms, especially the smaller ones, uh, especially when I was like in a time crunch and I needed to write something down in silence or practice my presentation with my group, but the library was full. Um, random other things is there's a hammock in the women's center you can go and lay in the hammock uh there's free tea in the faith and spirituality center uh and during the, the month of september a lot of the clubs are just opening up and they're having their first day they're trying to attract students for their membership and they give you free pizza so you can basically eat the month of september entirely on campus just based on the free pizza everywhere Um, in terms of organization of your degree, I would recommend to do things purposefully. So um, I would tell myself to pick my classes because I want to do them, not because I really feel like I should do them. Uh, join clubs that I want to join uh, and even spend time socializing with people that I genuinely want to socialize with. Um, in terms of self-care, self mental health, and general life advice, uh, I would tell myself to figure out how to, re how to eat a reasonable amount of vegetables, to find um, the physical activity that really suits me, and to incorporate that into my life sustainably, essentially throughout the course of my whole life. Um, and one thing I wish I realized earlier was that undergrad is a protected bubble where you are allowed to fail and learn uh, and people will be less 
understanding of you the moment you graduate. And this is particularly important if you want to learn more about careers, like what can you do with your degree? Uh, I would say that as an undergrad, you can send pretty much any professional in the workforce an email uh, just saying that you're a student and you're really looking into their job and if you want to have coffee with them just buy them a coffee uh, they'd be quite open and people love talking about themselves and their jobs so you can get away with that in your undergrad the moment you're out of it you can't do that as well because people assume that you should have done that before